Ski there. Like a turtle coming out of its shell. Saturate with axle grease. All right, so this is the box that it came in. That's not important. That's the important stuff. So we've got both shocks here, and then the air hose kit. Now, not really knowing much about these, and and only. Um, lightly, lightly doing research on them. We are going to learn how to put these in together. It looks like it does come with an instruction thingy. But one thing to note is this, this at the top rotates, but I don't know if it moves up and down because I don't know if you can see down in there, but there is actually a little rubber bladder down inside. See that little rubber bladder down there? And it looks like this whole thing moves up and out. But, I don't know. It's all kind of funky to me. But what we're going to be doing today is taking out the old, old shocks. The old dirty ones. The other ones over there. And then, putting in these. And then, uh, yeah. It shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Got the dampeners out. This one's a little dinged up because when I had done the the flip on the the rear axle, this bolt I lost this one because I didn't tighten down the nut all the way because I'm I'm a nut. And that uh, got a little, little thing, little dented. Here is all the little hardware that it comes with. Now it recommends using a quarter inch drill bit, but this isn't a quarter inch drill bit. This is, well, it's a little bit smaller than a quarter inch, but I'm gonna work with what I have. So what we have, little hose clips. It comes with a little extra washer, or uh, not washers, but little, these things extra donut things and then this is all for the Schrader valve so these all the hoses connect to here the other side of the hoses connects to this T and then with the Schrader valve what you do is anywhere I suppose in the vehicle you could mount that so let's say if I wanted to fill it from inside the vehicle I could put it over here if I wanted to, and then I could fill it from inside. My plan is to actually put it on the bumper so it has that outdoor access. But the way that the order of operation, I should say, is you have this, and when you put it through the hole, you're going to have these two. No, wait, these three. You're going to have these three here on the inside, and then these two on the outside and then your cap at the end to uh, cap it off. So what you do is you would put your nut on, your washer, this rubber ring, and then you would put it through where you want to put it, and then you'd put your little safety warning about 200 max PSI, 25 PSI minimum, and then you'll put that nut over it. And then you're you're rocking and rolling guy. So I think the next step is to actually just put the dampeners in. And uh, what I'm going to do, because there is no air in it, I'm going to just install the upper portions on and then put a little bit of air in it so then I can move these out to attach to the axle itself. So uh, let's get to it. Now, 
the next step is to hook that line up, hook this line up, and then get it all plumbed up. And I'm going to be drilling a couple of holes up through here to mount those little clips so I can have good hose management. Because the last thing I want is some flyaway hoses and then losing all my air pressure in the rear because it's dragging on the ground going down the freeway. This one, up on this side, the driver's side, we got a mount point there, mount point there, comes across and meets that one. Now the nice thing about these clips, you've got the main clip, but then there's a little area where it bites onto that little round part, kind of pinches into place, and it holds very nicely with the cables. So, that one runs up here, both of them run over here, and... You see right here, they all meet right here, and there's the hole. So, I have all of this leftover, leftover uh, hosing here. So what I'm going to actually do is trim them down, and uh, it's actually pretty simple. Because you can always take more off, but if you go too short, you can't add back to it. So, we'll go right there, and... My knife, and this is actually pretty, uh, pretty thin plastic. It's gonna eat through that pretty easily. There we go. Now, now that you got your hosers here, take this. Take your little. Rubber washers off your mold donuts. And then you're gonna take one of these. You're gonna put the the space shuttle tip on first, and then you'll run the donuts in, and leave about an inch, maybe three quarter inch, like so. And then. And put it in. Ta da! Easy peasy. And go a little bit shorter. And I'll pinch it nicely. But I seem to have forgot the most important part, which is uh, the actual cap. So uh, put this on first. <laughs> Now, this nut in the back will help you uh, adjust it however much you want this sticking out of wherever you put this. Each uh, you know, case of rock and throw and yeah, whatever. But, give yourself enough space that you can easily put that pump on it. But, you've got your nut, your washer, and your rubber washer. Your warning, just in case you ever happen to forget, because we're all human, we all make errors. What are you doing? Hey. Go. 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 
all is well on the inside. There we go, and to finish it off. The cap, which fits on very nicely. Hey! But, we're gonna put a little air in it, because now, we got to hook up the actual dampeners instead of just uh, having them hanging there because they don't they don't do much when they're not attached so let's get some get some err got my air pump hooked up only thing is is this operates up to a hundred psi but I think it should just be just all hunky door all right, let's see what happens. Well, looky there. Like a turtle coming out of its shell. That one too? Oh, not so much. I don't know, I think it's going to the path of least resistance. So. Not even. Not even at like 20 psi. So we'll start with that. We'll get everything hooked back up, and I'm sure once I add a little resistance, that one, this one over here is gonna pop out, no doubt. All right, I got everything in place. So. This, uh, this passenger side one was a little sticky. It wouldn't come out, so I gave it a little bit of a wiggle. Hello? Go back inside. Back inside. Thinking you're some free roaming dog. So I gave it a little wiggle, and then it just inflated out. So, what I'm gonna do. Well. It's at 100 PSI and holding. I don't hear any hissing noises. So that's, uh, that's always a good sign. So, uh, cool. There we go. And then you take your cap. Um, you take take your uh, take the the cap. Um, well, well, when you find the cap, you just put it on. Nothing but the best of audio qualities. It was uh, pretty cut and dry. I inflated, deflated, inflated, deflated, and just kind of listened and watched the pressure gauge as well. And uh, it seemed to be holding, so I am quite satisfied with it. And it actually. So, if you were watching this as this video is coming out, it is the. Tuesday before this Thursday that this video is going up. Uh, I drove this van with fancy air suspension down to Florida and it survived the whole way. Not only that, it barely lost any air. I think the total amount of air pressure kind of bleeded while it was sitting because I had a full week in Arizona. Uh, it was about, I think I had pumped it up to 80 PSI, and when I checked it on the way back, or when, when I had gotten back from Arizona in Orlando, Arizona to Orlando, it was 20 PSI less, so it was only 60 PSI. 
So it didn't sweat that much in a whole week of it just sitting. Now, when I had left, I had inflated this up to 100 PSI, and I don't believe it has dropped very much because the ride height's actually been pretty sufficient. And as you can see, it's not level like it normally is, but the nice thing is about these shocks is they are adjustable. So when it comes time to hauling the trailer and getting a nice level ride height, I can pump this up to 200. I have a floor pump that can go well above 200 PSI, so if I wanted to, I could pump it up to that, but I'll just have to see when I have the trailer attached of how much it will need. But all in all, I am very happy with it. Very comfortable ride. It works well as a dampener and also adjusting ride height. It's just a very nice air shock, so I would highly recommend it. But thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. And other than that, I appreciate you for watching. And uh, stay rusty.